Hello, all you people on the internet, and welcome to Quick Phoenix, the show where I run through a game's plot, gameplay, and setting to give it a review at the end. Kinda. Of. So, this is going to be a rambly show where I'm trying to remember a game's plot and do it from there. Today's first game, well, the first game, is going to be Uncharted Drake's Fortune for the PS3. Originally titled Project Big, the game came out on November 19th, 2007, for the, well, PS3. The game opens up when you're on a ship with Elena, a photographer that Drake kind of tricks with her to go into Panama, and as soon as you find this book in a casket, because that's the best place to put books, you know, just in the water, you start being attacked by modern-day pirates, because they're not always with the R in the air, that's for the fourth game. So after you do that, you leave her on an island, and it's up to you and your best friend, Victor Goddamn. Sullivan, to find the treasure. Once you're at the island, you break a few things, go through things, blah, 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 blah. you get attacked by some more modern-day pirates, and you run into Damien Dark, I mean, um, Neil McDonough. You run into Neil McDonough, of all people, and he's threatening to kill you and shoot Silly, and you get away with Elena, who came out of nowhere to save you, I guess? I, I don't know. You then use Silly's plane to fly to the coordinates that were in the book that you found in the German U-boat, because Nazis, and you land losing Elena on the way down. You have to then fight through the entire island to get her back because, you know, Drake has to be a hero because that's what everyone else does. After shooting a buttload, and I mean a buttload of people and some really creepy trap thingies that you kind of go around, you find Elena and you start uncovering the secrets of this island. It was a old Spanish colony, and for some reason it was flooded, like maybe they wanted to keep people there. Ooh. Nate wants to go after Neil McDonough, the Roman Neil McDonough, because he has stolen Roman Kazar, the Spanish sidekick, because that's ethnicity in games, kids. Remember that. Once he hears of his plan, he wants to go, and he's like, hey, look, we're gonna go look for the treasure anyway, and he runs into his good old pal, goody buddy old pal of mine, Eddie Raja. And they just go on a magical, lovely adventure, running away from zombies, because they find catacombs, and they go, and they kill all these demon zombies that are, you know, chasing everyone around the island. They're killing everyone. Drake soon escapes from this, but only to be trapped into a German Nazi bunker, because apparently Nazis were here too. Because you know what? Nazis. When all else fails, Nazis. That's a sentence I didn't want to say so many times. <laughs> Well, Victor God damn. Sam Sullivan is dead, and this is just becoming rambly because I'm losing the plot of this game. Um, uh, you fight a lot of people, you shoot up, and then you get... Sully is alive, actually, because Sully isn't dead. He, the book saved him, and then you use that book to go through the puzzles, and then you fight the Nazis, zombie, demon things, and then... Sully's alive still, so you meet up with him, you gotta fight through a few more things, you gotta go to a church, because guess what, Nazis love God, man, did you not know that? And then, once you do that, you get to go to, you're gonna go underground, because you gotta find the treasure, and the treasure is El Dorado, something I forgot to mention up until this point, El Dorado, not the movie, so that is a great movie. And uh, Neil McDonough over there opens it, he gets infected, and Navarro shoots him, and then you gotta go on a boat with Navarro because he hopped on the treasure, and you gotta save Elena because he kidnapped her, and all this lovely crap, and then shoot, boom, ah, Navarro's at the bottom of the sea. That's the entire story, kinda. It's like a drunk history here. Uh, the gameplay is your standard third-person shooter, where you just aim, you shoot, you hit him in the head, you gotta control and switch the weapons with that stupid little D-pad thingy that comes on the PlayStation controllers. Really not fun. Uh, there's dodging, there's cover, the stealth is there, but not very refined. It's a little sticky because it's a early, early PS3 game. Remember, um, I didn't say this, if you were thinking of buying this game, I would recommend buying the Uncharted Nathan Drake Collection on the PS4 instead, because it just gives everything the Uncharted 3 playstyle, and it just makes it better. The setting is a tropical island. Woo! Colorful! Kinda not really. It's all the same. You got puzzles, you got underground ruins, you got temples, you got more temples, you got trees, and more trees, and crumbling things, and boxes, and barrels, and Spanish. And that's... Also, the setting. Um, the other half of the gameplay that I just am going back to now is you get to climb around and do stuff because you're a real parkour, hardcore, parkour guy. And uh, he goes around and he jumps and he loves it. 
I really loves it. So this game is really, really fun. I really, really, really enjoy it. I'm a huge fan of Uncharted. It's a great game to start off with. There's a few little bullshit sections, I feel, but that's just the gameplay being dated and just bad enemy placement here and there. Two actually has some worse, in my opinion. But the game is still a great time for anybody who wants to play it and enjoy a good story, in quotes. Because uh, it's a little bit light, but it's fun. The characters are great. The comedy is great. Victor God damn. Sullivan's the best. Nate's the best. Elena, you get to like her. Uh, so with all that said, I give this game a gub out of 10. Thank you for watching.